Hello to my sewist and general crafters. I am glad you are back to hear me talk about scrap fabric and what I do with mine as a quilter. Certainly as a quilter, my scraps go into scrap quilts like that. I hope you saw my first video where I talked about how to take simple, a simple rectangle like this one and make beautiful quilt blocks and produce beautiful quilt tops. I also talked about how to organize these rectangles so that you're ready to sew your quilt in a snap. Go over to that video, have a look at that one as well. Today I'm going to talk about strings. As I previously mentioned, you don't want your scrap fabric to be in a hot mess like this. You want it ready to sew. So. Although the strings may be a little bit more difficult to organize per se, there are ways to do it. I simply wrap mine around old cereal box. So use whatever piece of cardboard or thick firm board that you have that you like. And this way they stack away easily and are not an unsightly mess. Also, you know I'm on my way to a retreat. So this is much easier to pack for a retreat than the big bag, right? Or bin. We, I know there's plenty of y'all out there who have bins filled of scraps that are also a hot mess. Anyway, back to this quilt. Once I have my strings slightly organized, and yes, I do go the extra step when I'm sitting and sewing and have them divided into colors, reds, blues, greens, blah, 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 because in my quilt block, I want to make sure I have as many colors going across it and that one block reads in one colorway versus another, right? I want a nice even distribution of color across my string quilt block because I want a nice color distribution across my whole quilt top. Now in this instance, I used a gray fabric in the middle, which helps produce that diamond effect that you see behind me. Don't you like that? I do too. Because of that strikingness that the gray gives, there's actually a couple of layouts I could have done this quilt block. And since I know I'm gonna make it again, I'm ready with my quilt blocks for my second version of this quilt. The other thing I will say is don't be afraid to pick a striking color for that middle strip. Yes, you can do white. Yes, you can do black, but hey, y'all know purple is my favorite color. So one of these scrap quilts will have a purple stripe running through it. A beautiful plum, eggplant, something. Yeah, I'm gonna go that way. Anyway, I forgot to mention, I like to put my strings on a base because then I have a piece of fabric that is easily sewn together and also it makes squaring up this block easy. I forgot to mention I cut that interfacing out at eight and a half inches so that the block finishes eight inches within my quilt. That means my blocks are a decent size and my quilt top goes together quite quickly. This is an eight by eight layout, so I only needed 64 blocks. Again, I have plenty of scraps, so that wasn't it. That wasn't a problem. The other good thing about using a large uh, block, something like an eight, nine, or 10 inch, or even a 12, if you really want yours to come together real quick, is you get to see a lot of visual interest from each strip. I have the cancer fabrics here. I have the boots here. I have some strawberries here. Your eye from heat there just reads all of this as a single fabric with a lot of interest in it. But when you come up close, you get to have a little bit more of an eye spy feel. You can find all sorts of stuff in this quilt. The other thing, remember I mentioned as well, is with a quilt like this, there's so much visual interest going on. There's so much going on within a quilt. People will love using it because they will not be scared to use it. Those quilts that we make that are deemed beautiful, too nice to use, you know those quilts, that sit and don't get touched very much. Well, this is one of those quilts that will get pulled out and used all the time. 
Let me see. What else do I want to mention before I close off this video? Oh, because this, I like my strips in my string quilt to be two and a half inches width or smaller. And yes, I will sew a one inch strip, one inch wide strip in here to give, especially something like a lime green or pink because it gives a block a lot of pop. There's a lot of thread here in this block, which means there's a lot of thread in my quilt top. With that, I have to think about the batting I'm gonna use. Now on this quilt, I already know I'm gonna use a beautiful minky on the back. I'm gonna use likely a low volume minky with a low volume pattern to it or a solid. And I know I want my quilt motif to show. Well, it's not gonna show against all of this uh, busyness on the front. Where I can get it to show is in the border and in on, on the back of my quilt. In order to get it to show, because I know that the thread has given my quilt weight, I want loft, but I don't want the batting to add weight. So I may decide not to use a batting at all and let the fluff that I get from the minky on the back be enough. Or I might actually put a polyester uh, batting in the middle to give me loft. Now, I normally would not recommend polyester in any of my quilt uh, quilts because that's just um, not one that I care for. I prefer a cotton batting and specifically actually a wool batting in most of mine because wool gives a nice loft as well. So in this instance, I think I might go that way. Stay tuned. Subscribe to my Facebook or my Instagram channel and you'll see how I finished this and you'll see whether you agree with me or not on my choice. Hey, it's a scrap quilt. If it doesn't turn out exactly the way I envision, I'll just make another. Like I said, I already have the blocks ready, right? But that's the beauty about quilting. The different design elements we have to play with, we see the end result and when we play with them, we get to see if the result that's in our head actually come to fruition. That's the part I enjoy. So I'm going to test out some ideas with respect to my quilt motif and my border, the minky on the back, the batting, maybe or maybe not. I might do an A and a B just to see. And because I do that test on my scrap, I will know whether that is also true for a more, um, I'd say, um, one of my more beautiful quilts, let's say. Those, that one which probably won't get used very much <laughs> by others. I use my quilts. Anyway, let me finish this quilt. Oh, actually, I'm not going to finish this one before my quilt retreat. I have another one to finish before my quilt retreat. So hopefully I'll get that third video out to you in the next couple of days. And if possible, I might even squeeze in a fourth one because there's one more design element that I want to discuss in relationship to scrap quilts. Anyway, let me get to it. Let me know if you have any questions and comments. Post them down below. Thank you for your time. Bye for now.